Hi everyone, my name is Frank Westfall and in this video I'm going to show you how to get your files off of a computer that no longer starts up due to a corrupt operating system or a hardware failure such as a failed motherboard or some other critical failure. As long as your system disk is still functional, your data is not gone and you can have your files back pretty quickly. I'm going to do this by using a SATA to USB physical adapter to access the disk or disks on the failed computer and copy that data off to another computer where it is then accessible and usable once again. This is the second video of a two-part series on how to get your data back off of a failed computer. The first method I demonstrated was using an Ubuntu Live USB disk and that video is on this channel if you are interested in learning how to use Ubuntu Live to access a system disk on any PC computer. Computer hardware failure is a fact of life. Like any electrical and mechanical equipment, computers can and do fail. But a common misconception is that when a computer has a major failure, like a motherboard failure or a critical operating system failure, for example, that the files and data on that computer are gone. This is simply not true. In the vast majority of computer failure cases, the disk or disks inside the computer where the data is stored are usually fully working. As long as your system disk or system disks are still working, your files are not gone. And even if the disks are damaged, there are options for advanced file recovery. I'm not covering that in this video because that typically involves paying for data recovery software or a disk recovery company to disassemble the disk in a clean room and pull the data off. But for the vast majority of operating system or hardware failures, you can have your files and data back very quickly. Briefly, I want to say thank you to all of you who have recently subscribed to my channel. I write the scripts out for all of my computer systems tutorials videos in advance, and this takes a lot of time. But the reason I do this is because I want to make sure that I don't forget to put something important in the video. As an IT engineer on the job for 10 years, I know that the details matter and I want you to have accurate information. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the like button, you are supporting this work. And I appreciate that very much. So thank you. All right, let's get to it. This is what you'll need for this process. First of all, access to any computer that is still running okay. This doesn't have to be yours. You could borrow a computer, basically any computer that will allow you to plug a USB disc into it and then also be able to have access to the data on that disc. You will need a USB flash drive that can copy your data onto once you have access to it from the disk that was in the failed computer. And you might have a lot of data on the disk that was in the failed computer. So you want your USB flash drive or you can use an external Seagate or Western Digital, like one or two terabyte, four terabyte external drives, that's fine too. You just need a storage medium that is large enough to hold all the data that you want to copy off of the disk that was on the failed computer. If you're going to use a flash drive, I recommend a minimum of 128 gigabytes, just so you have a lot of available storage for pulling your data off. But a 256 or a 512 would be absolutely great. And then you also need a SATA to USB adapter like this one. I have links in the description on where you can buy these and they cost about 20 bucks for a decent one. One thing that is very important to know about these adapters is that if you're accessing a 3.5 inch disc, the adapter must have an external power supply. So if you're buying one of these, you'll see that some are only about eight bucks, but they don't include the additional power that you need if you want to be able to access a 3.5 inch disc. So I recommend getting the powered versions so you'll just be able to access 2.5 or 3.5 inch discs without issue. And very quickly, I'm just going to show you how these work. So basically, this is just an adapter that has a SATA data port on it. And then this connects to a USB. But if you know anything about SATA disks, you know that they require power as well. And on this one, this is the SATA power. That's what gives the disk power to run. And this is what allows us to plug into the data SATA port on the disk. And then the USB which we use to plug it into the computer to access it. And of course, you will need a computer that has crashed and any small tools that are needed to remove the disc or discs in it. In the case of this one, all I need is a little Phillips screwdriver. 
So step one is that we need to access the disk on this computer. We need it completely detached from the computer so that we can use our adapter. On a lot of laptops, it will be difficult to access that disk because on a lot of laptops, the disk isn't designed to be removed and replaced on a regular basis. On this particular model, it actually is designed to be removed. So it's very easy to access this. But just know that if you have a really thin laptop, it might be very difficult to access your disk and you'll probably have to do some significant disassembly to get to it. But you can research that, just Google search your make and model of laptop and then where is system disk and you'll be able to get some information on where it is before you start pulling things apart. You definitely want to know exactly where your disk is and exactly how it's connected before you start pulling your hardware apart to access. Unless if you're going to junk the computer, then it doesn't really matter. You can just rip it apart and get the disk. I'm only doing this on a laptop, but on desktops, it is very easy to get the disks on basically every desktop or small form factor or mini tower, whatever. Anything that isn't a laptop is usually pretty easy to get the disk out of. You just want to make sure that you unplug everything from the desktop before you start and then put it down on the ground, open it up, and you'll see how to get your disc out. Usually they clip in with little hard drive trays or disc trays, and you'll figure it out if you just look at it. You wanna unplug the SATA ports on it and then pull the disc out, and once you have the disc, you're good to go. And as I mentioned, in this case, this 2.5 inch drive would run without external power, but I'm gonna use the external power on the USB to SATA adapter and plug both these ports in. And I want to make sure I get you a close-up of this. Here's your SATA data port. Here's your SATA power port. This is what the data port adapter looks like. So I plug that in. And then this one also has a little L shape to it. All right, those are both plugged in. Some of them will have a little power switch on them. On this one, there actually is a little power switch. And now that we have power and we have the disk connected, we are ready to plug this in to our other computer and we want to have the other computer running first so the other computer's running we're plugging it in and i'm going to switch to screen capture mode to show you what we do once it's plugged in and windows by default when you plug in a usb disc just opens the disc so we know right away that this local disc i is the disc from the failed computer but if you weren't sure i'll just show you a quick way to double check i could go to eject and eject the USB to ATA adapter. And then just look at which disk disappears. So yeah, it was the disk I that disappeared. So I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in so it shows up again. And there it is again. So this is the disk from the failed computer and this is where all of our data is. And at this point, what we want to do is plug in our USB thumb drive as well. So that once we identify the data that we want to copy here, we can put it on the thumb drive. All right, so I plugged in the USB drive that we're going to copy the data to. Your USB thumb drive might be named something different. I used this one in a previous video for BitLocker, so mine's called Windows BitLocker. But now we want to go and get the data off here. So you might have data at the root of this disk. Yours will very likely have a different letter name. Just know it's the last disk that was added to the computer. Your data can be anywhere on this disk, but typically, it's going to be in your user profile. So we want to go to users and then click on your name. In this case, I'm not actually going into either of these ones. I'm just going to copy data from the public folder, but you would want to click into your user profile. And in your user profile, you would see the things you're familiar with, like desktop, downloads, documents, pictures, music, videos, etc. In this case, for this demonstration, I'm just going to use the public folder and can see these are some default folders that creates documents, downloads, music, pictures, videos, etc. There could be other folders in here. I just put some fake data in here and say this is what I wanted. Okay, now I have it. Copy and I'm going to paste it into my USB thumb drive and now I have the data. So if there was a lot of data here, and it's very likely that you will have a lot of data, you want to make sure that your USB drive is large enough to hold your data. I recommend a 128 gigabyte USB disk or a 256 gigabyte USB disk. And it could be an external drive. It doesn't have to be a USB flash drive. It could be an external mechanical drive, like a Western Digital or Seagate two terabyte or one terabyte or four terabyte drive. But you just want to know that the destination has to have enough available space on it. 
it to be able to handle all the data that you're going to copy over to it. So now that we have our data here, we are good to go. We can close this. We can close this. We can eject both of these drives. I'm just going to eject the USB to SATA adapter first. And then I'm going to eject the USB flash drive that I copied the data to. So now that we have our data copied over to our USB flash drive or external storage medium, we are good to go. We can disconnect the adapter, pull the data port, pull the power port. We're done with that. We have our disk. We can put it back in the computer. One thing I want to mention is that if the reason that you couldn't access your data was because you had a corrupt operating system on this computer, now that you've pulled all your important data off the disk, you can just reinstall an operating system on this. You could throw Windows 10 or Windows 11 on this. At the time I'm recording this video, Windows 10 is going to become end of life in October of 2025. So you'd want to put Windows 11 on it. And when you put a new operating system on this, it's going to run like brand new. As long as there isn't a hardware issue with the computer, it'll run like a brand new computer again, providing it has good enough specs. And most computers beyond like 2015 or 2016 are plenty good enough to run Windows 11. Obviously, the newer and the higher of the specs on the computer, the better it will be. But um, I have run Windows 11 on this many times, and I'm going to run Windows 11 on it again. I actually switch back and forth for the purpose of making these videos. When you put a new operating system on your computer, you don't have to go buy a new one. You can save a lot of money by learning how to install operating systems. I have some videos on Windows 10 and Windows 11 clean installs um, and how to make the installation media. So just know that once you have your data, if your hardware is good, you can just put a new operating system on it and it'll run like brand new again. Many others have found my Google Drive video very helpful because Google Drive will prevent you from losing access to your files to begin with. Using Google Drive will allow you to not only synchronize your data across any number of devices, multi-way synchronization, where you have access to your data on any device, as long as it has an internet connection anywhere in the world, which is very sweet. It also gives you a backup of your data on Google servers. So if something like this happens where you can't access your files, you don't even have to do any of these steps. You don't have to do the method one that I showed with the Ubuntu Live Disk. You don't have to do method two using a USB to SATA adapter. You can just log into Google Drive servers and pull your data off and you're good to go. I highly recommend taking the time to get Google Drive set up and running correctly. The link to my Google Drive video is in the description below. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you did. Also, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I do try to answer them, and so far I think I've answered every one of them. Bye.